With more now, I am joined by Canada's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Teresa Tam, joining me this morning from Ottawa. Dr. Tam, good to see you again. Good morning, Marcia. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm in Ontario, so I'm happy to see things starting to ease up. But I want to get your characterization to begin of how we're doing in Canada against the fight against COVID-19. People are getting vaccinated as quickly as they're being rolled out. Case counts and hospitalizations are down. I don't need to tell you that. Provinces are reopening, yet we still, doctor, have the Delta variant hanging around like a bad smell that won't go away. So where are we? Well, I also have a great sense of optimism at this point. Um, as you said, the epidemic is generally well under control, but not every part of Canada is the same. Uh, Manitobas uh, had their third wave a little bit later than everybody else, so they're still having to manage a lot of patients in hospitals and the ICU. Um, and there are parts of Ontario still that have uh, more activity than other parts. So it's not all the same for everyone everywhere. Um, so, and, and as you said, there are uh, variants of the viruses that are um, worthy of us, um, you know, um, treating them with respect, as it were. Uh, the Delta variant, as you said, is more uh, easily spread. So um, it will find pockets of under immunized uh, populations um, and uh, those who are not fully vaccinated. So, and we also know that it could potentially cause more severe outcomes such as hospitalizations. So we must still be precautionary, especially uh, as you've uh, outlined that uh, while many people have had the first dose, uh, quite a lot of Canadians haven't had the full uh, schedule of vaccines as yet. So we must stay vigilant. But as I said before, you know, outdoor summer, stay outdoors, do most of your stuff outdoors, meet your family and friends outdoors, um, and take uh, greater precautions uh, if you are ever indoors, especially with people that you don't know at your household and uh, you obviously then don't know whether they've been vaccinated or not. So, but it is uh, great to move towards the beginning of July uh, with such a positive uh, uh, outlook, but we just have to be careful. So we know the variant, yes, is spreading in those unvaccinated pockets. Dr. Tam, how bad would the numbers have to be to force us back into another lockdown? Well, um, I think as I've uh, communicated before, early action and fast is much easier to deal with. So as cases uh, increase in a certain area, uh, if the local authorities take swift action uh, earlier on, then what I would love to see is a more targeted approach to some of these more restrictive public health measures, should they be needed. Uh, and you have to be prepared for the fact that you could um, have more restrictive public health measures still to come if you have pockets of um, um, under-vaccinated uh, population. And so, uh, but early and swift actions means you can then take a more targeted approach. Uh, when you know the edges of the outbreak, you put the brakes on fast, then that would avoid more broad spectrum, wider geographic uh, coverage of the more restrictive measures. And we'd like to hear again from you how much protection having two doses gives you against the Delta variant. Well, I think I'm really grateful that in Canada we have some of the best vaccines um, in the world. So the Pfizer, Moderna, mRNA vaccines in clinical trials, the two doses are over 90 percent, 93 or more percent effective against uh, symptomatic illness or even asymptomatic infection as well. And the AstraZeneca vaccine also has been doing very well, um, it, uh, especially against more severe outcomes. Uh, so these clinical trial results uh, have borne out in real life estimates of vaccine effectiveness. And I do think the vaccines have played a massive role uh, together with the public health um, uh, measures that um, everyone in Canada has been supporting and listening to the local public health. All of that has put us into a pretty good um, uh, situation. But two dose, uh, I say one dose is not enough. Don't go halfway because with the Delta variant and other variants that might emerge, uh, two dose offers you a broader protection 
and uh, we hope a longer duration of protection as well. And Dr. Tam, Canadians look to the United States, which is now pretty much fully wide open, and wonder why can't Canada be in the same boat? Why can't we do the same? Well, I think taking a um, data-driven or science-driven staged uh, approach as we reopen um, to ensure that we minimize the risk and the resurgence is very important. Um, it is important to watch what's in the United States, but also globally. More importantly, domestically. So one example um, is the Yukon territories. Yukon has done very well. And they have cautiously reopened and have found themselves in a situation where they've had more cases they've, than they've ever had before, uh, in a really vast majority in the unvaccinated population. That gives you a signal and a warning of what might happen in other areas as we reopen. Um, unfortunately, even though many of the cases are in younger populations who may not get that sick, um, the virus will actually then um, permeate throughout the population and may then infect people who have a higher risk. Seniors whose immune system are not um, as robust as the younger population or people with underlying medical conditions, which has resulted in some hospitalizations and unfortunately some deaths. So uh, that's what we want to avoid. Uh, so it's not just looking in the United States, look around Canada as well, ease slowly monitor your cases and hospitalizations and if we stage it um, well then what you don't want what you want to avoid then and you might be to avoid is going backwards uh, nobody wants to keep going forwards and backwards even though we have to be prepared uh, to surge and so I, I do think that uh, taking a thoughtful uh, stage approach seeing what happens at each stage of reopening uh, will give us the best path forwards so are you personally comfortable with the reopening um, in this country? Every province is at a different stage or a different phase, some more open than others. But are you comfortable with where we are? Or do you think that some provinces are moving too fast, given what you've just outlined? Yes. So there's a lot of uh, things that we still have to learn about this pandemic. In uh, one of my uh, recent presentations uh, in the modeling or forecasting. Uh, remember that we actually don't know what will happen. We were just modeling what could happen. So in those scenarios, and then with the Delta variant built in, we know you can maybe as a begin lifting some of the restrictive measures. When you get past that 75% first dose and get past that 20% second dose, you can begin to lift some of the restrictive measures. But based on modeling, you want to get two doses in the vast majority of people. Uh, initially, we said 75, 75, uh, before you begin to take away all the personal um, protective measures as well. But that is not, again, I said the same everywhere and uh, every place. That Canada is a vast country, and they have different epidemiology. Uh, there may be different populations that have different levels of immunity to start off with based on prior um, rates of infection. But all I can say is that we have to watch the situation very carefully, learn from each other across the country. If one part of the country um, that's open earlier than others, um, the, the, the thing is just to monitor what happens in those initial days and weeks and not be afraid to slow things down uh, if we see anything different uh, happening. But we are on a good trajectory, um, so we'll just have to watch uh, what happens in the next days, and we can give further projections as we see what happens when uh, provinces are reopened. I, I, I have to, of course, admit to the fact that I am anxiously waiting to, to, to see uh, what happens, and we just have to, um, you know, not let our guard down. Yeah, and that has been a message that has been consistent, and Canadians, um, I think, have been very compliant. I'm wondering how long you think we will be wearing masks. It's not as contentious of an issue in this country as it is in others. And yesterday we heard from the WHO, which talks to the international community, about the need to remain vigilant when it comes to mask wearing. How long, Dr. Tam, do you think we will be wearing masks in Canada? I think it's, um, it's, it's a very interesting question because I, I do think that 
um, everyone in this country has been following public health advice. And I still think it's a bit like watching the weather forecast. We have to watch what's going on uh, with virus activity in, in lo local communities. If you hear your local public health uh, give you advice to um, continue to um, be vigilant, wear your mask, and particularly, really, in uh, all the higher risk places, uh, then please follow that advice because it depends on the virus activity. And right now, um, we are in this sort of pre somewhat precarious situation where not everyone's been fully vaccinated. So this is a period of precaution. Now, uh, if everybody gets their second dose and we aim way higher than 75% uh, going into the fall, uh, that will be around, the, you, you know, the, then um, really feeling our way through this uh, we can uh, then advise, uh, particularly at the local level, whether masks are still needed. But uh, I have to say that uh, mask wearing and some of the um, hygienic measures, washing your hands, staying home when you're sick, has not just cut down on uh, COVID-19, it's cut down on influenza mm -hmm. and other respiratory viruses. Wearing a mask and having it in, in, in on your person, on your pocket, might just become one of the habits that we have uh, going into win winter respiratory virus season. Some of the symptoms of COVID-19 look very much like, uh, you know, overlaps of influenza and other respiratory viruses. So we might see mask wearing um, going into the winter as well. So it becomes more of a habit um, as, as much as it is a, a mandate if we see virus activity. So I can't tell you for certain but I think that it is a good tool, a uh, good layer of protection to have about us. So don't throw away your masks, uh, just keep them. Um, I, we did mm -hmm. uh, at the Public Health Agency put out some guidance uh, for people who are fully vaccinated because vaccines are affording uh, really good protection. Then you can take a precautionary approach um, to take off your mask if you're meeting with people who are vaccinated, you know who they are if you are outside, if you are inside with people who may be partially or uh, may not even be vaccinated, but you feel comfortable and you and the other guests or whoever you're meeting with know about your risk and what uh, you're comfortable with, that can happen as well. But avoid, I would say, under the following circumstances, still consider uh, keeping your mask, especially if you are senior or if you have underlying medical conditions. And those are the ones that we keep telling people about. Close, close distance where you yeah. can't physically distance. Crowded yeah. uh, uh, environments and then close with bad ventilation. The virus is not, uh, has not disappeared entirely from our community. So remember those rules of thumb and that will stand you in good stead. Okay, we're going along with you and I really appreciate you give us, giving us your time. I do wanna ask you one last question before you go, and that is about the deadly heat that we are seeing in Western Canada. Is there anything that the federal government can do to help people in Western Canada right now who are suffering and in some cases dying? We're seeing sudden deaths. Um, Dr. Tam. Well, I think there's very much uh, a lot of things that we can do in support of the provinces who need that, and uh, that, that can be accessed through um, our public safety colleagues. But what I would say from a public health perspective is absolutely be really careful uh, if you're going out the heat. Stay hydrated uh, and as much as possible uh, in the shade if you have to be outside. Check out where locally those cooling stations uh, cooling centers are so that you can get into them as needed. Uh, watch out for signs of um, um, your body getting a uh, heat stroke or um, 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 heat injuries. But one thing that I think is really important is check on your neighbors. Check on anyone who's elderly. Um, you've heard about the, um, uh, the, some of the deaths that can occur in a heat wave are amongst the elderly, those with disabilities, um, do, children, pets, do not leave your children in the car or um, pets because that the, the, those vehicles can get into high temperatures. Be prepared for power outages. Have emergency plans in place in case there is one. Check your emergency kit in case of a power outage. All those things you can prepare for ahead of time, but absolutely check out locally 
where those cool cooling centers are um, and check on people you know uh, uh, who are um, maybe isolated. Yeah. So COVID-19 has resulted in social isolation. We don't want that to happen in a heat wave. Okay. Dr. Tam, thank you so much. As always, really appreciate it. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Thank you very much, Marcia.